Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today we will be looking at the new 14900KS from Intel and I would love to start the video but Makita decided to sleep on my script. If you think about it, the 14900KS could also be called 13900KSSS because technically, if you think about it, the 13900KS was a quicker K, then there was the 4900K, which is essentially a 13900KSS. So this is like a 13900KSS. Um, anyway, let's just start. This video is powered by Thermal Grizzly and the Conductor Not Extreme Liquid Metal Compound. Especially for deleted CPUs and direct dye applications, this thermal interface material will give you the best possible results. Based on an indium gallium alloy without the addition of tin, this tin will lower your temperatures significantly. Find out more in the link below, which will lead you to the Thermal Grizzly shop directly. In total, we will have two videos about the KS. The thing is that today, for me, is Tuesday evening. I received the CPU yesterday, while I just received the review guide right now, but I already performed most of my testing. In the review guide, I found out that the 4900KS should be configured in two different ways. There's a performance profile with 253 watt and the extreme profile with 320 watt. When I received my CPU yesterday, I didn't know about those two power profiles. So in theory, in some applications, especially Cinebench, the CPU is then allowed to draw more power because I was testing with auto values in BIOS. But then again, it won't really matter for 90% of my testing because those are gaming scenarios. And in the gaming scenario, the CPU stays below those thresholds. Since I only had two days for this video, that is testing plus shooting plus cutting and everything, there is also going to be a limited amount of CPUs in the comparison. I was only able to test against the 14900K, which I think is the most important comparison value than the 7950X 3D, but I didn't have enough time to compare it with the 7800X 3D. You're now looking at Cinebench R23 numbers, both multi-threading and single-threading results. In multi-threading, that is the yellow bar, you can see that the 4900KS with about 40,400 points is about 2% faster than a normal 14900K. Also in single-threading, the difference is very small, with 2297 versus 2313 points. Also, as usual, the AMD X 3D CPUs are not that quick in Cinebench. The 4900KS, at least in Cinebench, is only a tiny bit faster than the 1400K. And the results you just saw were the average out of 5 Cinebench R23 runs. And while doing those 5 runs, I noticed something. Now with the yellow bars, you can see the 5 runs of the 4900KS and in blue the 5 runs of the 4900K. And as you see, the first run of the KS was very strong with over 41,000 points. But if we add a trend line into the chart, you will see that the 4900KS slowly loses performance on consecutive runs. Whereas if we look at the normal 4900K and its trend line, then you see it pretty much stays constant with about 39,600 points. And the reason for that, who would have thought is the power consumption and thus also the heat dissipation of the 14900K, which then has to be dissipated through our AIO. As you can see, once I fire up uh, the Cinebench R23 run peak, it was almost 400 watt, which is just too much for the AIO to dissipate, which is also why it clocks down, why it cannot maintain the high clock. And that's also why if you repeat it, if you repeat the test multiple times, you will get a lower score. So that's already in this case 38,000 points. As I mentioned earlier, we will have two videos in total. The second video is going to be the lidding and overclocking and everything about the temperatures. And the lidding is something that's quite interesting with the 4900KS because there seems to be some kind of special deal going on behind the doors with Intel and some selected SIs. So system integrators that are companies which are building pre-built systems, some of them will be allowed to delete 4900KS CPUs and they will still be covered by Intel's warranty. That is something special, something I have not seen and heard about before. So yeah, you might be able to find some high-end, maybe overclocked systems out there 
with deleted 4900KS, maybe with some kind of direct die cooling solution, that comes officially with Intel's warranty. That is pretty cool. Unfortunately, it doesn't count for us normal consumers. Maybe there will be something coming in the future, we will see. But at least the step that Intel is doing and allowing this kind of modification with warranty, I think is a pretty cool step. And that's why I like Intel being so open about modifications and the yeah, overclocking topic in general. Now back to Cinebench and how the 4900KS behaves versus the K. For this I started with this rather chaotic looking chart which contains a Cinebench multi-core run on the left done with the 4900K and the lines you can see is the P-core clock. And after the multi-core run it was followed by 30 seconds of just hanging around in idle and then on the right you can see a R23 single core run. And if we look on the left in the multi-core run area, we can see that the 4900K constantly clocks at 5700 MHz once all cores are loaded. And on the right side in the single core run, the CPU is clocking between 5.7 and 6 GHz. And then I repeated the same testing with the KS to show the differences. And first in the multi-threading scenario on the left, you can see that the KS starts with a higher clock, about 200 MHz difference. But then the CPU is getting too warm and it drops down a little bit lower. On the right side in the single core scenario, we can see a clock of 5.9 to 6.2 GHz. That is insane. In summary, it means that the 4900KS just clocks 200 MHz higher than the K, which is just the same as all the previous KS CPUs were doing. But on the other hand, it is still impressive to see 6.2 GHz with ambient cooling these days. Because if I think about this, a few years ago, we were seeing these kind of clocks with liquid nitrogen cooling. It's impressive what kind of clocks Intel can maintain with ambient cooling on those KS CPUs. But then also there are some things that are not as impressive and that is when we get to gaming benchmarks. And I performed seven different gaming benchmarks for you and I think we have to look into them. The first game is Cyberpunk 2077 in 1080p with max details. And Intel managed to get on top of the chart. But the price they pay for this is insane because you can see a plus of 4% in performance while we also have plus 33% more power consumption versus a 4900K. And if we compare it with a 7950X 3D, which is basically performing the same when we just look at the FPS, it consumes a third of the power. And in all the charts we are now looking at, you can see the yellow bars with the FPS and 1% low FPS and the blue bar with the power consumption. And if you look on the total left of the blue bar, you can see the detailed power consumption listed there. You might have noticed in the chart that on the left you could see the memory configurations. And then you might have also noticed that I was testing with different memory configurations within the CPUs. That's also because I didn't have enough time to test multiple configurations. Typically I would love to show a realistic one and also following the specs like the max IMC clock that Intel and AMD allow. But in this case I went with 6000 C30 for AMD and 7600 C36 for Intel. But only for the KS because the K had a little bit worse IMC and I had to lower the memory clock to 7400 C36. We continue with the more recent Helldivers 2, again in 1080p and ultra settings. And you can see the difference between K and KS is minimal. There's almost no difference. But you can see there is a huge difference in power consumption. The KS draws 40% more. And also if you look at the 7950X 3D from AMD, you will see that it didn't perform as well in Helldivers 2. The reason for that is because the game was running on the non-X 3D cores for whatever reason. So maybe a 7800X 3D might have performed better here. That's a problem I faced multiple times, I'm not quite sure why, especially with the 7950X 3D. And I did everything to not face this issue. I was setting up a new Windows. I had all the Windows updates installed, the latest BIOS version, the latest chipset driver installed, everything was installed. But still in some games, it was not putting the game on the right course. It was not running them on the X3D course. It's an issue I had multiple times also in previous reviews. And that's why for those cases, sometimes a 7800X 3D might be better for you if you just want to game because it will always run on the 3D cache course. Then again, as you can see in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, it was working pretty well and the 7950X 3D performs really good. It has the same minimum FPS as the KS, 
but the power consumption is only half as high. If we compare K versus KS, the KS is only about 1-2% to faster, but consumes a lot more power. And that is the same behavior I saw in Counter-Strike 2, with 4K resolution and high details. All three CPUs are very close within each other. But the 7950X 3D is extremely efficient because it only consumes 71 watt during the gaming session, whereas the KS consumes 173 watt, basically for the same performance. By the way, I also slightly changed the way I'm benchmarking my CPUs and GPUs in this video because I started to record a 10 minute gaming session and then take the average values out of those 10 minutes, both for FPS and also for the power consumption, just to make sure that I'm getting more realistic data and also to make sure I have less errors in my testing. That also means that this data is not comparable with my previous tests. In PUBG, the 4900KS performs extremely strong, especially in the 1% low FPS. With 301 FPS, it is about 8% faster than the KCPU and 5% faster than the 7950X 3D. But in the average FPS, all CPUs are very close to each other. In Valorant, AMD is very strong. And that's also interesting because I tested this a few months ago with the 7950X 3D. And there I also had the issues that the process of the game was not running on the X 3D course. But now, a few updates later, it is running on the correct course, leading in very good performance. The KS on average beats the KCPU by about 5-10%, to but it's still not enough for the X 3D CPU. Even though the KS consumes 180 watt. The last game for today is Remnant 2. Again, unfortunately, the 7950X 3D was running on the wrong course, leading in a huge performance loss versus the Intel CPUs. The difference between K and KS, again, is tiny. 2% difference, but 40 watt more power consumption. In conclusion, it is exactly what we expected. The same as what we had with the 12900KS and the 13900KS. It is a tiny leap in performance, but a huge jump in power consumption, which is typically caused by the exponential relation of clock versus voltage. So yeah, for this higher clock, you need higher voltage. And typically I saw about 1.4 to 1.45 volt, which then drastically increases the power draw. It is still impressive to see 6.2 GHz in some cases though. In all gaming scenarios I tested, I always saw stable 5.9 GHz across all of the P-Cores. Depending on the game and scenario, I saw a performance increase of the K2KS of about 2-5%. to But I also saw a power consumption increase of 30-40%, to which is getting completely out of hand. And it's yeah in no relation whatsoever. Especially if you look at how little the power consumption of the AMD CPUs is. Then again, you might face issues, for example, as I have them, with the 7950X 3D that the game might run on the wrong course. That is something I usually don't observe on the Intel CPUs. I never see the game running on the E cores instead of the P cores. It seems like Intel is doing this a little bit better than AMD. But again, if you're just looking for a gaming CPU, you can also get the 7800X 3D, which won't have any of those issues at all because it only has the X 3D cores. Then also again, it is interesting how much hotter the AMD CPUs are. If you look at, for example, the power consumption of the X3D and the, yeah, the KS, the KS in some scenarios has yeah, double or triple the power consumption and has basically the same temperature. In the end, the 4900KS is a pure enthusiast product, same as the previous KS CPUs. They are completely out of any relation when it comes to price, performance, and especially power consumption. In most scenarios, it is just a lot smarter to buy the AMD CPUs simply because they might be cheaper, they have a lot less power consumption, which also yeah, leads to different problems, because if you want to get a KS, you need a much better cooling solution, you will have a higher power draw, which then increases your ele electricity bill. If it's like in Europe, you maybe don't have an air conditioning, you will have yeah harder days in summer. So those are probably things to consider if you want to get a KS. Otherwise, I would say in most scenarios, it just makes so much more sense to get an AMD CPU, probably the 7800X 3D. But also in some cases, especially if you enjoy overclocking modifications, Intel is still the better choice because they allow overclocking and AMD doesn't. Those are the things to consider. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.